in this how to video I'm going to discuss just exactly how to do um, titration experiments and we start off uh, with a conical flask and in that we put 25 centimeters cubed of uh, an acid or alkali it can be known or it can be known unknown um, the piece of apparatus we normally use to put the alkali into the conical flask is a pipette as it's the most accurate can use a, a small measuring cylinder but obviously the accuracy goes dramatically. And once we've got the acid or alkali in here we usually add two or three drops of an indicator and then we set the conical flask up underneath a burette. So let's just recap. If we've got a known concentration acid in here we put an unknown concentration alkali in here. If we've got an unknown acid in here, we put a known alkali in here. It doesn't really matter which way around you have it. But whichever way you go, you have one unknown, either in the burette or the conical flask, and one known, vice versa. So, next stage of the procedure then. What we do, and let's assume we've got a unknown alkali in here is we run in a known acid until the colour just changes. So we get a colour change and that indicates the end point, in other words when neutralisation is ha completely happened. And what we do is we record whatever that value it is. And that's what we is known as our rough titer. That's the first go. So it's going to be rather inaccurate. So what we do in stage 3 then is we discard the contents of the conical flask, wash it out very carefully with distilled water and then we set it up exactly the same again. And this time we do a second titration but let's say our rough titer was 24 centimeters cubed. What we would do is we would run in down to about 22, 23 centimeters cubed and then we would stop the tap and then very very slowly drip by drip we would add um, content to the conical flask. So we got a colour change used literally on one drop. And once that colour changed what we would then do is we would do the experiment all over again. So we would take the contents of the conical flask, wash them out with distilled water very carefully, set them up in exactly the same way and repeat the experiment. And hopefully we would get a third tighter which was within 0.1 centimeters cubed of our second titer. If we didn't, we would repeat the experiment again, clean out the conical flask, set it up exactly the same as we're doing stage one, and do a third titer. Again, we're looking for 0.1 centimeter cubed accuracy between two consecutive titers. When we've done that, what we then do is we take an average of the results. Now when we do this it's very important that we don't include our first rough titer because that's that's our first cockshy at doing this experiment basically. It's to give us an idea of where or how much either acid or alkali we need to add to our conical flask to affect complete neutralization. So what we do if we've got two results which are within point one of each other, what we do is we add them together, divide by two to get an average. If we've got three results with it which are within point one centimeter cubed of each other, we add the three results together to get an average. And then we proceed with that to the calculation stage. So that's the effectively the experiment done. I'll repeat what I said. You have either an unknown in here, acid, with a known alkali or you have a known acid with an unknown alkali or you can do exactly the same with the alkali in here or the acid in here. it makes no difference which way you do this experiment but there is an unknown and a known in one or the other here so now let's look at a typical um, example of um, titration results. And I've set it out here on the page. So we've got 25 centimetres cubed of a known concentration sodium hydroxide, and that was in the conical flask. 
and it reacted exactly with 23.4 centimetres of sulfuric acid. And the problem is, is what is the concentration of the sulfuric acid in moles per decimeter cubed? And here is the equation for the reaction. So when I'm doing this type of question, the first thing I will do is I will set out either above or below the equation what I know and what I need to know. So let me just do that. So from the question, what I've done is I've added the numbers from the words. So I've got 25 centimetres cubed of sodium hydroxide and I know the concentration, 0 0.15 mole per decimeter cubed. So it's that volume, that concentration. And now I look at my sulfuric acid. I've got 23.4 centimetres cubed and the concentration is effectively what I want to find. So this is what I'm looking to calculate in this experiment. So, how do we proceed with this? Well, the first way we've got to do with this is we've got to work out exactly how many moles of this we've got. If we know how many moles of this we've got, we can then work out how many moles of this we've got. So let's just uh, set out how we do that. So, first thing I've got here then is I've got the general equation for the number of moles related to solutions. So, number of moles of solution equals the concentration times the volume of that solution divided by a thousand. We're working on the thousand because we're talking about centimetres cubed. So, if I take the values that I've got for sodium hydroxide, let's just put those into the equation. So we've got the concentration is 0 0.15. We've got the volume of 25 over a thousand. So we arrive at an answer of 0.00375 moles of sodium hydroxide. Okay, so we've got 0 0.00375 moles of this. But let's look at the stoichiometry now. There's two of these to every one of these. So what that implies is there's two moles of this react with one mole of this. So what we need to do is we need to divide this number by two to get the right ratio of moles because it's two to one. So what we need to do is divide this by two to get the number of moles of H2SO4. So let's just do that. So there we go. If we divide 0 0.00375 by 2, we get 0 0.001875 mole of H2SO4. And that's in 23.4 centimetres cubed. So this number is half of this number. Or there's two lots of this to one lot of this. And that's very important that when we do these e experiments and equations that we look at these big numbers in front of things and get the right molar ratio. So if we just look at this question just as a digression we have two moles of that reacting with one mole of that to make one mole of that and one mole of that. And that's really what the expression the stoichiometry means. We need two lots of that to react with one lot of that to make one lot of that and one lot of that. So, moving on then. We've got this number of moles, but it's actually in 23.4 centimetres cubed. So what we now do is we now need to rearrange this equation to get um, an expression for concentration in moles per decimetre cubed. So let's do that. So here we have it then. I've rearranged this expression to make C the subject of the equation. So the concentration is equal to the number of moles times the thousand divided by the volume. And if we look at the question, look at what we've just worked out, we know the number of moles, 0 0.001875, 
times a thousand and we know the volume which is given to us here which is 23.4 if we work that calculation through we get a final concentration of sulfuric acid as being 0 0.8 mole per decimeter cubed and that's the answer to the question what is the concentration of the sulfuric acid three stage question three part question first is to determine the number of moles of the sodium hydroxide in 25 centimeters cubed the next stage was to, de to develop that to equate that to the number of moles of reacting acid and in this case we had to divide it by two because we have a stoichiometry of two to one and then the final stage is to turn that number of moles into concentration using by rearranging this formula and by doing that we arrive at an answer to the problem. Hope that's helpful. Thanks.